All right, so let's talk about chord tones and how they can make your soloing more effective. So today we're going to be taking a look at just the most basic example, which is going to be our G major chord here. So when we look at the G major chord, what we're really talking about is we're talking about what's called an arpeggio in music. And an arpeggio is simply a name for the chord tones that make up that chord. So let's take a look at the G major arpeggio. And this arpeggio is in the open position. So when we say open position, we're talking about an open chord shape. So this is an open G major chord shape here. And this open G major chord shape is made up of the following chord tones. So we have our third fret E, second fret A, open D, open G, which is the root, open B, third fret B, and then third fret high E. So that's your G major arpeggio or your G major chord tones. Those are all of the notes that make up the G major chord. Now when we think about soloing, we tend to think about scales. So this is the G major scale that we're looking at now. And we're gonna play this scale out of the open chord position. So every scale is gonna make is gonna be made up of seven notes before it goes back to the root and starts over again. So what's the difference between a G major scale and a G major arpeggio? Well, the G major scale contains notes that are not necessarily in the actual G major chord. There are notes that will work with the G major chord, but not all of them are going to be specifically in the G major chord. So a good solo, if you were playing a solo over a tune, for example, and you wanted to play a solo that was a little bit more effective than just sort of running the notes that you memorized out of the G major scale, you could kind of start arpeggiating a little bit. And arpeggiating is basically where you're going to take the scale tones or the arpeggio, and you're going to use that as your bass line. So what we have in a G major arpeggio is we have the one, which is the root, and then we have the three, the third interval of the G major scale, and then we have the five. Okay, so the one, three, five interval is typically known as a major chord. And in this case, what we can do here, we, like I said, we can use a lot of those open strings, right, like the open G, which is the root. And what we can do is we can add a flat seventh in there. And that really makes it sound cool. And that's something that Tony Rice uses a lot is the flatted seventh. So how do we find that flatted seventh? Well, we start on our root and we count up the, the G major scale here. So we say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So a flat seven. So right now we have our finger on the fourth fret D string and a flat seven is going to be one fret below the fourth fret D string. So we have fourth fret D string, that's our seventh, so our flat seventh is going to be third fret D string. And that's something you see Tony Rice do a lot is he'll play that flat at seventh and then he'll slide it up to the G which in this case is the one, right? Because we're in the key of G major here. Okay, so you want to be thinking about that when you're soloing. Think about the chord tones, which like we said is the one, the three, and the five. And then you can add that flatted seventh in there. Do some slide ups. So th that's an easy way that you can kind of really sort of indicate the chord more effectively and it'll make your soloing sound richer and just more intentional. So let's take a look at a specific example here. And this song, this is just the A part that I'm gonna play, but this song is called Wheel Hoss. And basically this song is a great example of using the open position 
G, G major arpeggio and also throwing in that flatted seventh in there to give it kind of a bluesier feel. So let's take a look at Wheelhaas. <laughs> So as you can hear, that is a great example of the G major arpeggio, like we were saying. And it's, it's really a good exercise in kind of playing out of chord shapes. Because really, you know, the tab for this tune, you can see it. It's, it's basically the G major arpeggio, the first four notes, right? So you have the third fret low E on a downstroke. And then we're going to do alternating picking here, although you could do this with double downs. But I think it's easier with alternating picking. So we've got our third fret low E. Upstroke on the second fret A, and then we have our open D and our open G, and then right here we have our flatted seventh to open to third fret D again. So that flatted seventh is that third fret D. Then we're going to go back to that open G there. So basically, what we've got here is we've got the G major arpeggio, note for note. And then we have our flatted seventh to open D, to third fret D again to open G. And open G, of course, is the one. So we have our one, three, five, and our flat seven here. So of course, we've got the, the same kind of run again in the second half of measure number one. We've got our third fret low E, second fret A, open D, open G, our flat seventh, right, our third fret D, and then open D, now we have our, th our first fret A to open A. And that first fret A, well, what, what interval would that be? Right, so why does that work? Well, we're kind of creating a, a bluesy sound here, kind of a Tony Rice style sound. And one of the ways that we did that is we added that flatted seventh, remember that third fret D. And now we're adding in one additional tone here, and what we're adding in is a flatted third. So in this case, we're going to be playing that first fret A to open A, and that first fret A is a flatted third. So that's another cool thing that you can add into a major scale. Okay, so after that flatted third to open A, you can see at the beginning of measure number two, again, we're just going to be starting over that same arpeggio again with the flatted seventh, except this time we're just going to hold it. Now we're going to go up to the upper register here, to the B string, and we're going to play open B to 1st fret B to 3rd fret B. Okay, so we're still in this G major scale here. And then we have the 1st fret B to open, and then 3rd fret B to 1st fret B to open. Right, so that little line there on the B string, it's going to sound like this. We're going to end on that open G. OK, so measure number two. All right, so we essentially have the same phrase kind of repeating three times in a row here. And this melody is very closely sort of following the G major arpeggio. And that's why it's a really good exercise in kind of, you know, working on your soloing, even working on your cross picking, and just kind of thinking about these scale tones and what notes you can add to them to really kind of spice up your soloing a little bit. <laughs> One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four.